Hey guys, how's it going? Now if you've been following the recent smartphone launches, you know that virtual RAM is one of the most highlighted features in all of those launches. Whether it's called virtual RAM or extended RAM or dynamic RAM expansion or whatever marketing term that brands use, the idea at its core is the same, to give more RAM to your user. Or is it? Or is it just some marketing jargon that makes actually zero sense? Well, let me find an answer to that. This is Varun from Guiding Tech and in today's video, we'll be taking a deep dive into how memory management in Android actually works, what this virtual RAM really is and whether as a consumer you should be bothered or not. Now this video is going to be a little bit techy and geeky, but I'll try and simplify things as much as I can, so stick around. All right, so first things first, let's try and understand how Android actually manages its memory because without understanding the basic fundamental, understanding what virtual RAM is will kind of be a little difficult. So at its core, Android makes use of paging and memory mapping instead of using swapping like Linux does. Now we'll get to swapping and what Linux actually uses in a bit, but let's stick to Android for now. Also, if you're only interested about what virtual RAM is, you can skip this part and skip to this timestamp down here and just understand how virtual memory works, virtual RAM works. Right now, let's just understand how Android currently makes use of its memory management techniques. Okay, so now within Android, you have three types of memory. You have RAM, then you have ZRAM, and then you have storage. Storage is basically your UFS storage or your EMMC storage, basically the internal storage that we all have. RAM is your DDR RAM. I mean, we all know what RAM is. And let me just illustrate for you guys to understand that DDR RAM is like way, way faster than any sort of storage out there. Like seriously, just remember that RAM is any day faster than whatever kind of storage that you put out. Even an SSD is not as fast as a proper DDR RAM. So keep that in mind. Lastly, we have ZRAM. Now, what is ZRAM? Well, basically consider ZRAM to be a partition on your RAM. So the idea behind ZRAM is that low priority data that is currently running on the RAM, well, the system does not actively need it. So what it does is that it compresses it and then stores it in a different partition, which is the ZRAM. Now, obviously there is a give and take involved in terms of CPU processing because you have to constantly compress the data and then actively decompress it. But that process is any day faster than accessing your data off the storage. Okay, so now I said that Android makes use of paging, right? Well, how it works is that memory, basically your RAM is divided into pages where each page is typically of 4 KB. Basically consider pages to be a part of your memory where each part is of 4 KB. Now all of these pages, whether they are being actively used by an application or they are free, it respectively show where, how much of your RAM is being actively used or how much RAM is free, respectively obviously. Now the way that Android manages its memory is that it basically makes more free memory. Now, how does it make more free memory? Well, it just actively shifts those used pages and the data on those used pages to your storage. So how does that happen? So Android makes use of a kernel swap daemon or kswapd that actively switches that. And this is defined because pages can broadly be categorized into two categories, clean pages or dirty pages. Now clean pages are something that have an exact unmodified copy on your storage. So basically if you need free memory, then the copy of your clean page can be removed from your RAM because there's already a copy, unmodified copy of it on your storage. On the other hand, dirty pages are basically that are actively being used in the RAM, that are dynamically changing. So their copy on the storage is a modified copy. That was a little bit too technical, right? Well, let me try and illustrate with a real world example. So let's say you're multitasking on your phone and you have a lot of apps open on your phone. So for instance, now let's just say you open Twitter and then you browse your feed and then switch to something else, right? So now Twitter is there in your RAM, but it's not actively refreshing. What I mean by that is that yes, you still get notifications, but your timeline is still not actively refreshing. And then when you switch back to Twitter, the first thing that you'll see is that the timeline in its exact state where you left it, 
after which the app will realize okay now it's being actively used following which the app will refresh its timeline the same thing happens whether you're using facebook or reddit as a user you may feel that okay my app is still running in the background when it's actually not it's just on your storage but uh, when you just launch it it'll just relaunches in that same state exactly how hibernation works so yeah that was clean pages now for dirty pages let's say you have spotify or any other music player running in the background so what do you do in that scenario well it cannot be you know shift it to your storage because it's dynamically running at best what the system can do if it requires a lot of free space then what it will do is that it compresses spotify and then shifts it to zero because it cannot shift it to storage that is dirty pages okay so now that you understand how android manages its memory let's move on to the other side of the spectrum or not exactly the other side of the spectrum but basically how every other linux distro works which is that by using a swap partition so a swap partition is basically a extra space allocated onto your physical storage a partition a space a portion of that storage is being used as a swap partition so the way linux does is that whatever app you're running it will try and force it to run on the ram till the point where the ram is fully used now when the ram is fully used and now the system says okay now i need to launch another app and now i need more free ram at that point of time what linux does is that it moves an entire process to the swap partition so the difference between paging in android and swapping in linux any linux distro is that pages work well it they shift pages in the sense that part of memory whereas in swapping an entire process is shifted to the storage now is that what all these companies are doing well pretty much yeah basically what they're doing is that they're creating a swap partition and they are just shifting data all around i mean okay so let me just read off what vivo sent us in their press release by launching the x60 series which makes use of the virtual ram feature So they say instead of distributing small amounts of memory data, it uses processes as a unit to accurately identify processes which are of low importance and do not affect the user experience among those occupying a large amount of memory, and exchange these processes with external storage space, so as to greatly reduce the running memory occupied by a single RAM. Thus, the original DDR storage space of a fixed capacity can support the running of more apps. basically swap now before i talk about whether this virtual ram is good or not for you a lot of you guys might be saying that hey but my phone already has swap you know if i install an app like diskin for ram true they'll say that okay this much swap memory is allocated which is kind of true but there's a different story to it see here's the thing the only difference in the swap that you see in those apps is actually the zira in fact if you actually open ram truth and tap on the swap partition it'll show you that until unless you're using a custom kernel that makes use of a modified swap partition the swap partition storage space that you're seeing right here is technically just zira okay so now the big question if linux has already been using swap for ever since it was invented why has Android not been using it and why has it taken companies so long to well get to the stage i mean they're not doing anything new or extraordinary they're just bringing swap partitions to android and custom prom users out there they know that swap partitions could have been created back in 2010 2011 also back in those days also but yeah it comes at a cost and that is what defines the pros and cons of this so called virtual ram or swap okay so let's talk about the positives first Well, the positive here is that you get more RAM space available when you actually need it. For instance, when you are recording high-res video like 4K or 8K footage, and you do not want your background apps to close, that is where a virtual RAM comes in handy. Or whether you're gaming, that is where extended RAM comes in sort of handy. So yeah, that's good. So far, so good, right? But now let's talk about the downside. See, all of this works fine on traditional hardware like proper hard disks. but flash memory like ssds or your ufs storage which is there on your phone they have a limited life span of certain read and writes like seriously ssds have a limited defined number of reads and writes that they can support after which they will just start forgetting data 
that is just how ssds or basically any flash memory works like seriously android developers knew this already which is why they already mentioned it on their developer page so on android storage isn't used for swap space like it is on other linux implementations since frequent writing can cause wear on this memory and shorten the life of the storage medium now if you need a modern refresher of it just take a look at all of the complaints around the new apple m1 macbook air where all the users have been complaining about the extensive amount of swap memory that is being used and they're all complaining that yes it'll just shorten their lifespan of their ssds now i'll admit that with modern technologies and new advancements ssds have a much higher lifespan no denying that true but there's also no running from the fact that even after that swap will eventually affect the lifespan of your storage so long story short is virtual ram good well if you're into high res video recording like 4k or 8k footage of very long videos then yeah if you're into gaming i think every uh, oem skin out there has their own custom gaming board which should suffice for that job so you don't really need extended ram for everyone else i mean it's just best to keep the feature turned off because it's something that you won't even be using as much and regardless it will be deteriorating your storage's lifespan and nobody wants that right and well that was it i know this video was a little bit too techy but i'm sorry i just wanted to ensure that all of you guys got hold of the real big picture i don't blame brands for doing what they're doing i mean it's still good marketing and it's still a new feature is just that i feel they should have been a little more clearer here that using virtual ram will sort of affect the lifespan of your device as well and well that was it if you found this video helpful make sure to let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more awesome tech content till then this is vam from guiding tech and we are all working from home stay safe and i'll see you in the next one